let's say you apply to programs, you get in uh, to one or two, or let's just say one, but you're like, I really don't want to go to go. Ohio. Go. Go. Because there's so little guarantees. In fact, there's no guarantee you're going to get it. If you only got into one program this year, what makes you think you're going to have more choices next year? It's, 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 um, it's not fair. You can be a terrific candidate, um, but even the most terrific candidates are only getting into a small percentage of the program. So you got into program one program last year, there's a whole different pool next year. The pool may be more competitive than the year you applied. You've got a shot to, to fulfill your dream. Take it. Hmm. But aren't there so many, like I'm thinking about, for example, what if you have a partner, you have children that you, it's not easy to just pick up and go, you know what, it is my dream, let's say, but I don't, I can't necessarily pick up and bring my children to the middle of the country. I can't bring, relocate my partner's job. Should you just keep applying to those programs that you only in geographical locations well, that you know you can okay. be? That's fair. If your partner can't pick up, um, then you don't apply to those programs to begin with. But I'm saying if you have freedom, if you're a single person and you have freedom and the only restriction is I don't feel like being there, I, I don't think that's a good excuse. Okay. Because okay. I think I think you have to look in your soul and say, this is my calling. Then you don't set up a different standard for I don't feel like being in this place to, to pursue your dream. You pursue your dream if you have the opportunity. Hmm. I think this is this kind of conversation is going to prompt some reflections in people about like, how much do I really want this? Like, am I, am I really in this? Like I'll go no matter where. I, um, yeah. I keep, I keep going back to this. Like this is all important for people to figure out if they want to do this, because it's like, we can have a podcast on like how to get to how to get dates from dating apps. And we can talk about all about how to make your profile. I might have more experience doing this than Dr. <laughs> Barber, but how to make your profile super competitive and how to get those right swipes and how to get out on the first date. But then if you're on your fourth day and you like made the whole situation work that like this person really likes you. And then you're like, oh, but I don't like this person. It's like all of that work and setting up your profile and, go and getting all the tricks to get the person to keep wanting to date you doesn't help if you didn't want to be with them. And so I just think that it's a pretty bad analogy. People tell me they understand me until I give it. I get you. No, but, I get you. <laughs> but it, it's really thinking because I could tell you, like, I, I don't have one day that I regret this and I love it so much. And I feel so fortunate that this is what I'm getting to do. But trust me, if I didn't want to do it for all the reasons I want to do it, I would be pretty miserable. You don't make money for many, many years. You have a very intense, busy schedule. You're getting to do rewarding work. That's also extremely emotionally taxing as you develop muscles on how to hear things that are really hard to hear. Like it's a really, really big commitment. This is not like get your foot in the door and then whatever. It's like, being in the middle of the country where you don't want to be is probably going to be the least of the challenges of those five or six years that have a lot, a lot of navigating and effort um, and work. And so really great to prompt introspection and think, do you really want to do this? And how badly do you want to do it? Because there's a million other opportunities. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet some great people no matter where you are. Mm.